today we continue our work with the graph editor in After Effects, adding the value graph and overshoot and bounce. I have this project attached. Yours looks a little bit different from mine, but we're going to be moving some general shapes around and dealing with how we can make this a little bit more sophisticated movement. So the first composition is called Forward Box, and it is just a box moving forward. If you hit S to open up scale, you will see there's two keyframes. And the first keyframe we are at zero, and on the second keyframe we are at 100. If we open up our graph editor, we can see that it's pretty flat straight across, just a very, very simple movement. A couple of things that can help you with the graph editor. This defaults to be turned on, which is auto zoom, and it is pretty helpful. But if you turn it off, you can then zoom yourself. If you click control, you can zoom up or down, and alt will zoom uh, left and right. So I kind of click back and forth between the two. A lot of times I do like to be able to control it myself. So that is this button right here. So you can see that it is scaling and our speed is just normal going straight across. Now let's look at it again. And this time I've adjusted it some. You see how it has a bounce at the end. Let's look at the difference when we open up the graph editor. You can see that it kind of overshoots and then comes back to where it's supposed to be. So let's recreate this. Once again, if I hit S for scale and open up my graph editor, you can see that it's going straight across. This is actually the speed graph. Now, when you're in the graph editor and you click anywhere in the gray and right click, you get a whole bunch of choices. Auto zoom height is what I was just telling you about a minute ago. Now, show selected properties uh, is if you've got multiple keyframes and you just want to see the ones you're on, in this case scale, you would say, please just show me what I have selected. It normally defaults to auto select graph type. It's going to decide, do you want a speed graph? Do you want a value graph? Wait a minute, what is a value graph? Well, we haven't talked about that right. We Right now we're just looking at the speed graph and you can see that it um, starts at 50 pixels per second and then it pretty much stays there. I'm going to right click and I actually want to see the value graph. The value graph is different. The value graph is what the actual value of this shape is, meaning it starts at zero and it goes up to 100 scale in value. It has nothing to do with the speed. So let's change this to have it bounce. The first thing I want to do is I am going to turn off this auto zoom so I can zoom back a little bit and show you. What I want to happen is here at the end, I want it to overshoot so go past 100%, then come back to 100. So I'm going to click on that, and if you don't see the handles, you need to change it to a Bezier curve, which is this button right here. There's my handle, and I'm just going to tell it I want you to overshoot a little bit. So let's see what this looks like. Now it's popping in a little bit too much to me. I'm just going to let this play. Um, that is the amount of curve, so see if that looks better. Ah, it's still popping a little bit too much for me. That's better. I like that better. But it is up to you. You can see that as far as value goes, it actually goes up all the way to 140 or so before it pops back down to 100. That is the difference between the value graph and the speed graph. So now let's talk about rotation. So the two values we have in these keyframes is it's going to start at minus 180 and then it's going to end up at zero rotation back to normal. Let's look at our value graph. You can see that it's just a pretty simple from minus 180 to zero. This is actually a pretty simple one. Once again, right click, make sure that you are on the uh, value graph. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, control, scroll my mouse. And I'm going to make sure that I have Bezier turned on right here. I'm going to let it overshoot on this side. Turn on Bezier right here and overshoot on this side to create an S curve. I think this is the perfect way to see how the value graph can really affect the values. Between 180 and 0, it's really giving us some anticipation and some overshoot. The next one I call simple down, meaning it's a box that just simply moves down. So that would be a position keyframe. I'm going to click on P, and you can see our two keyframes. Let's go ahead and open up the graph editor. There is the speed, and it's a consistent speed. 
we're really talking about overshoot and bounce at this point. So let's use the value editor. Right click and turn on value graph. And you might ask, why are there two of them? This is the X and the Y. Our Y is not changing at all. Let's look at these keyframes. On the first keyframe, we're at 648 and 181. And on the second one, we're still on 648. The X doesn't change at all. And you can see that here. The X position is not changing but the Y position is changing. The Y is what we're dealing with in this one. So it's going to have to show us these separate because they are moving separately. The X is not moving. I do need to click this button right here to separate the dimensions more so that I can get my handles. Once you do that, you can see it is not a straight, straight, straight line. So we're not dealing with the first keyframe because it's off the screen. Let's go to this last one. I need to make sure I have a handle so click on the edge. If you do not see a handle, you can add a handle by clicking this button right here. I'm going to make sure it overshoots by clicking upward so that it goes above that value and then comes back. Let's see if we can see this. Definitely. Now it's jumpy, a little bit jumpy. I think I've got too much of a curve. So let's bring that down some. That looks a little bit more natural to me. Go ahead and see if you can do it. The next one is going from left and right. But a more sophisticated way to look at that is if it were to overshoot both the left and the right. So it has some anticipation at the beginning and then it has some bounce at the end. So let's see if we can do that. So on this one, the Y is not moving, the X is moving. Let's go ahead and open up our graph editor and we are going to make sure that we're on the value graph. Click on position and make sure they are separated. And you can see now that they, it was not going completely straight. Uh, it does have to give some type of a curve in order to make the speed work correctly. But we're not dealing with speed. We're on the value editor, the value graph. Click on this last, first one. And if you do not see that you have a Bezier curve, click this button right here to make sure you have a Bezier curve. But it should appear when you click on it. And we need to make sure that it undershoots. So once again, I'm going to turn this off so I can zoom back a little bit. Control, scroll my mouse, and I want it to go under so that it creates some anticipation. Let's look at what it does. There we go. And that's pretty, I got it pretty good on the first try. Just a little bit of anticipation before it gets there. It's thinking about moving. Let's make it a little bit more dramatic. There we go. And before it gets to the end, it needs to overshoot this a little bit. So it creates a little bit of an S. Now, I think both of these are a little dramatic. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more so I can make these a little bit more S-curve. Well, well, I like it. It looks pretty good. So go ahead and try that, and then we're going to add some secondary motion into this. We already have a pretty good S-curve, and we have some overshoot and anticipation, but we don't need to deal with our graph editor anymore, so go ahead and close that down. At this point, we're not going to be dealing with the position keyframe anymore. We need to deal with the path itself. So if you open this up, you will see there's contents, and inside there is the path. This is the actual path that drew the square. So go all the way to the beginning and just go ahead and turn on the path keyframing so that it will set us a zero point. That's what it looks like when it's normal. Now I'm going to open up Transform just so I can see where these keyframes are, and I want to use these keyframe buttons to make sure I'm lining up. So on that first keyframe, as it's anticipating the movement, I want it to kind of move to the side. So I don't want everything to move to the side. I just want these top two points. So let's zoom in a little bit. Just scroll your mouse. If you click this with your selection tool, it selects all of the points. What we need is the direct selection tool. If you click Control, do you see that my cursor is now white? This is the direct selection tool, and it can choose just one of the points. So grab the direct selection tool and move the one point. Click anywhere off of it. Now go grab the direct selection tool again, and remember it will be white, and grab another point. So we want both of these points to be exaggerated over to the left. Let's see how this is going to work when I hit play. And right now they're not really lining up. We'll kind of move that in a second. Do you see that it starts normal and it starts twisting to there? 
The timing is not right. We're going to get that in just a minute. Let's go ahead and do the other side first. So let's go to the last keyframe. By the time it gets to this keyframe, we need those to be shifted back the other way, as if the inertia is pulling it the other way. So once again, we're going to click once on it, control to get our direct selection tool, grab that point, and move it over this way, click off, direct selection, over that way. And you can be as extreme as you want. Let's see what happens now. Okay, it's looking a little bit better, but when it comes to rest, it needs to go back to normal. We know that this one here is our normal. It's kind of where we started. So I'm gonna go grab that keyframe, control C for copy, and go see where is the point where this needs to end. It's right there. So that means this needs to move over some so that I can paste right there. Let's see if this works. That one's looking better than the first one. First off, I don't think it should be pulling the whole time. I'm gonna move this zero point over closer. That might be close enough, let's see. Just because right at the beginning does it need to start pulling over. That's gonna be a little bit better. And I think a keyframe assistant would help with this, so I'm going to right click and add Easy Ease. See if that helps with that little pop. It's not perfect, but you see how we can really get secondary motion to help our movement. So we've added bounce and we have added overshoot. Go ahead and try it and see if you can do it. So you might wanna watch this again if this is confusing you at all. We've learned a lot today, but this is how you can really use the graph editor to create a lot more complex motions.